Living organisms are chemical factories and chemical synthesis advances in every day in the production of new drugs in many research labs. There are more than 60 million non-organic compounds. You should not be scared and try to memorize names of any of them. It might seem an impossible task to learn the physical and chemical properties of 60 million compounds. Fortunately, we will study organic compounds as families. We said that we know now the family of alkanes that contains carbon-carbon single bonds that can be cycloalkanes if it's forming a ring. If the carbon is making a double bond, we call that the family of alkenes and if he has a triple bond, we call the family of alkynes. But in this case, in this slide, we are going to discuss when we have other atoms different than carbon and hydrogen. The first family that we discuss is the family that contains oxygen. So we have family with oxygen. In the family that contains oxygen, we find primary alcohol is a primary alcohol when the carbon that bears the OH or hydroxyl group is bonded to a carbon that is bonded to only one carbon. We find also a secondary alcohol and that means that the carbon that bears the OH is bonded to a carbon that is bonded to two carbons and we remember that R goes for any rest of the molecule. It could be one short hydrocarbon chain or it could be a long hydrocarbon chain. We also find the tertiary alcohol and in the tertiary alcohol the carbon that bears the OH is bonded to three carbons. So we have the family of alcohols. They will have different chemical reactivity due to the type of alcohol. So we have to classify them as being producing different products in chemical reaction depending on what kind of alcohol we will have. We also find that carbon can bond oxygen to make the family of ethers. So we have only one carbon bonded to an oxygen that will be the family of alcohol. When the oxygen is bonded to two carbons, then that is the family of ethers. We say that ethers are unreactive substances that are used as solvents. We also have the family that contains sulfur. When it contains sulfur, it can have one carbon bonded or two carbon bonded. In this case, we have a sulfide that is a sulfur that is bonded to two carbons. The family of thiol, so we have only one carbon bonded, but to fulfill an octet, this sulfur needs to have a hydrogen. This family, the family of disulfide, is going to be very important for us when we study the biochemistry part, how proteins can get the cross link in the formation of a three-dimensional structure of a protein. That is going to be very important for the biochemistry part. Another element that can form bonds with carbons are the halogens. And this example is a haloalkane that contains bromine. But this is not limited to bromine. We can also have haloalkane containing chlorine, or it can contain iodine. It can contain fluorine. So all these elements can be part of the family of haloalkane. There is a family that also contains a polar covalent bond, and that is the family of amines. We have three different kinds of amines. The primary amines is when we see two hydrogens, that is a primary amine, one of the hydrogens in the molecule of ammonia, let me place ammonia here. Ammonia is NH3, which carries a set of lone pairs. 
but we see when ammonia has replaced one of the hydrogens and now we have a bond with one carbon that is forming a primary amine. In the formation of a secondary amine, we will have two carbons that has replaced the hydrogens in the molecule of ammonia. If it is the formation of a tertiary amine, we will have three carbons bonded to the nitrogen. We need to remember, it's very important to remember, that nitrogen carries two electrons. It's a set of two electrons important um, for intermolecular interactions. We will have a set of two electrons around the nitrogen, like in the molecule of ammonia. Now there is another family that we introduced in the lecture yesterday, and that is the family of carbonyl compounds. We have a carbonyl is a carbon making a double bond with oxygen. And we remember that this carbonyl has polarity because oxygen is a lot more electronegative than carbon. We will say that this oxygen is pulling electron density from this carbon. So we have a bond here, it's a double bond, not a triple bond, but it's a double bond that is polarized. Or we say that the electrons, those four electrons, will be closer to the nucleus of oxygen than to the nucleus of carbon. Therefore, we can place a partial positive charge around the carbon. For this family of carbonyl compounds, we have a subdivision. Yesterday, we called that the family A. It's the family of aldehydes and ketones. We, in fact, group this family in the same chapter in our textbook because the chemical reactivity, the chemical reactions that we study will be addition reactions for those. We also have the family of, family B is the family of carboxylic acid and its derivatives, derivatives. We have the family of carboxylic acid and its derivatives. And that means we have a carboxylic acid group, which means we have one carbon bonded to the carbonyl and a hydroxyl group. These are the ones, the ester, amides, are derivatives of the carboxylic acid, which means that they are synthesized from carboxylic acids. For example, if I have an alcohol, I can create an alcohol with the carboxylic acid to produce an ester. And if I have an amine, I can react an amine with a carboxylic acid to produce an amide. It is important to distinguish between having an amine and having an amide. It's not the same. We would say that an amine, there is not a carbonyl present in an amine. You have an amine is a nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogens. If it is an amide, remember that these are products of the reaction between carboxylic acids and amines to produce a brand new bond that is a nitrogen carbonyl bond. Amines are the basis of organic chemistry. Carboxylic acids are the acids, and amides are neutral substances. 